Welcome to our talk about agreement with coordinated subjects in the world's languages. Before I go to in so much more detail, let me say a few words about our project. According to the literature, resolution of multiple values for agreement is subject to variation across languages, although there is no explanation for why languages vary in the way that they do. Our aim in this project is to collect data on the variation of agreement resolution and to find generalizations about the factors that influence the choice of the resolution strategy. In order to do so, we want to systematically investigate subject-verb agreement constructions where the subject is coordinated. Coordinations can either be conjunctions or disjunctions and in one and two we have given an example and you see that conjunctions are formed with and and disjunctions are formed with or. The goals of our project were to create a database that contains reliable information about verb agreement with coordinated subjects and to find empirical generalizations about strategies for agreement with coordinated subjects in the world's languages. During our project, we also had to face several difficulties because information about agreement with coordinated subjects is rarely found in language grammars and coordinated subjects, especially disjunctions where both conjunct have mismatching file features are not frequently used by speakers and therefore speakers often are insecure which form to use and this may lead to unreliable results. In this talk we are going to summarize and present first the results from our database project then we are going to show that word order is an important factor for the agreement strategy. Concretely we want to show that closest conjunct agreement is more likely to occur when the coordinated subject follows the verb, while resolved agreement is more probable when the coordinated subject occurs first. We found no evidence that neither five features or the type of coordination differ concerning the agreement strategy. Finally, also language variation does not seem to play as big a role as expected. Uh, for our database, uh, we were looking at constructions involving coordinated subjects and a coordinated subject consists of two parts, which can be either coordinated by AND or by OR. The parts are called disjuncts in coordinations with OR and conjuncts in coordinations with AND. Assuming that word order might be a factor that determines the agreement strategy, the subject can either follow the finite verb of the clause, as you can see in the example in three, or it can precede it, as you can see in four. Furthermore, the conjuncts can either match in five features, as in three, or they can mismatch in five features, as you see in five. In case they mismatch in five features, then we would like to know which five features different languages mark on the verb. For our database, we are looking at three different features, namely the five features, gender, number, and person, as well as the feature noun class, which is used in many Bantu languages and Caucasian languages. But currently we do not have data from languages with a noun class system in our database. And this is why we exclude this feature from our talk today. Ideally, we wanted to look each feature up separately uh, since there seem to be different resolution strategies for different features in the same constructions in the same language. We found eight agreement strategies which are logically possible and the first strategy concerns first conjunct agreement and according to this strategy, the verb agrees with the linearly first conjunct here we have given an example from Moroccan Arabic and you see that the verb in sentence initial position agrees with the first conjunct Uma, which is the linearly first conjunct to the verb. The next agreement strategy concerns last conjunct agreement and in this strategy the verb agrees with the linearly last conjunct. Here we have given an example from German where you see that the verb agrees with the second conjunct of the coordinated subject because this one is the linearly last conjunct. 
The next strategy is closest conjunct agreement. And according to this strategy, the verb agrees with the linearly closest conjunct. But note, under VS order, this is the first conjunct. And under SV order, this is the last conjunct. This is what you see in H from European Spanish. The next strategy concerns ineffability throughout. And here a coordinated subject with conflicting phi features is not possible and another construction needs to be used in order to express an utterance involving a coordinated subject. We found this for Musao in Miran and you see in uh, 10 that it is not possible to coordinate a subject and uh, to have conflicting phi features, but it is possible to coordinate two sentences. So we can have we run and they run, but we and they run is not possible in this language. So another construction needs to be used. The next strategy seems to be very similar, but anyways, is very distinct. So it's ineffability unless the forms are syncretic and here mismatching five features are not allowed unless both forms are syncretic. Here we have given an example from German, but we call it German bar since it is an abstract example here. You see in the example in 11 that uh, we have a mismatch between first and third person singular, but both verb forms uh, do not seem to match in this case unless the form is syncretic. This is what you see in 11b. So the verb form here, the modal for first and third person is syncretic. And this is why the sentence becomes grammatical. Whereas in case the form is not syncretic, the sentence becomes ungrammatical. The next agreement strategy is resolved agreement with hierarchy effects and uh, mismatching gender and person features are resolved to the higher of the two values on a scale. And in 12, we have given the most common scales. And uh, you can see that number is resolved to the value that reflects the sum of the numbers of the individual parts. We have given in 13 example from modern standard Arabic, where you see that we have in A, a mismatch between a second and first person but due to this hierarchy, this mismatch is resolved to first person. And uh, because both conjuncts appear to be in singular, the, the sum of both is plural. And this is why first person plural is marked on the verb. The next but not the last strategy is default agreement. And uh, according to this strategy, instead of computing new five features, a default agreement form is chosen. Here again, we have given an example from modern standard Arabic, where you can see that this uh, verb in sentence initial position is marked for third person singular, although both conjuncts of the coordinated subject appear to be in plural. The last agreement strategy, which is logically possible, is a, a special agreement form. And instead of computing new five features, a special agreement form is chosen that is not part of the regular agreement paradigm. So it might be that this form is the default form, but the special form can also be a form that does not mark agreement at all. This is uh, what we have found in Somali, what you can see in 15, where in all three sentences, the verb form is always the same and it is not marked for the five features we were looking at, but you see that uh, this is a special form which is chosen here. We hypothesize that the agreement strategies which can be chosen depend on four different factors. The first factor concerns language, and this seems a little bit trivial, but given the chomsky bohr conjecture, it follows that syntactic rules, such as agreement, for example, should apply in all languages similarly. And literature on the agreement with coordinations has usually only looked at, a ha at one or a handful languages at once. In comparing pre previous language-specific studies, it seems obvious that languages do show variation. So language must be a factor that determines the pattern of agreement, at least partially. What needs to be seen is whether related languages behave alike, 
and whether the cross-linguistic variation in agreement patterns can be reconciled with the Chomsky-Bohr conjecture. The next factor concerns the agreement feature, and besides looking at the features separately, it is also worth looking at feature interactions. Morosic uh, found, for example, that there is a connection between gender and number, because gender depends on number. They showed for Slovenian that clauses conjunct agreement, first conjunct agreement, resolved agreement, and default agreement are all possible, but depending on the five feature. The third factor is word order, so whether the verb either precedes or follows the subject. And Aouna et al. were among the first to show that there are word order differences because they showed that various Arabic dialects exhibit resolved agreement under SV order, while they show closest conjunct agreement under VS order. The last factor concerns the coordination type, uh, so and or or. And Marusic and Chen showed that in Slovenian, both coordination types behave the same when it comes to the range of agreement strategies. But however, they found that disjunctions show a greater tendency for closest conjunct agreement than conjunctions do. And taking all this together, we wanted to design our database in a way that each of these factors is stored as information. And this way we can check which of the four factors play a role typologically. And here I hand over to my colleague Anke. So in this next section, we want to present to you um, our database and we want to show you how to use it. Our database consists of two parts. The first part is a comma separated value file that stores all the agreement strategies found in the languages under investigation. In 17, you see an illustration. So what we do is we store a combination of all four factors that Melissa described um, to you. So language, agreement feature, word order and coordination and then see which agreement strategy shows up. The second part of the database is a set of language files and that contains more details about the respective languages and the agreement strategies. And um, this part also includes language examples. Now let me show you how you can use the database. To use the database, please go to our website and click on database. Here um, you see um, the, the starting point of the database and you can, for example, just load the data and then you get all the results needed. So you see currently we have 150 results from 27 languages. And uh, in the summary above, you see how many results um, you have for respective uh, language or agreement feature or word order and such. You also see a percentage that shows you how much percent uh, the found results constitute from the results in total. If you scroll down, you see a table that gives you a more detailed um, picture of the results. So here you have the table as described in 17 with a combination of four factors and then the agreement strategy. Now, what can you do with a database? So let's, for example, uh, see how you can find information about a certain language. So um, let's see what we can learn about Turkish, for example. So then you just look in the filter language for Turkish. You load the data and then the results are filtered for language. If you scroll down, you see that you will only find um, Turkish data points here. And you can look in what agreement features Turkish has, what word orders it has, and eventually also importantly, what agreement strategies you can have. Again, if you scroll down, you find a um, table with more detailed results. Another way you can use the database is to look for a certain agreement strategy and then see which languages have this agreement strategies. For example, you could check which uh, languages have closest conjunct agreement um, in number. Then if you load the data, you see uh, a list of languages um, found here. And if you scroll down, you again find a more detailed summary. If you then want to find um, language examples, you just click on the link here for respective language, for example, Bulgarian. And then you get to the language site uh, and you see um, patterns and uh, language examples. All right, now you probably wonder how we collected all these data. So what we did is uh, we did a large elicitation study in various ways. So we had online surveys and standard elicitation sessions one-on-one. -on -one. 
Currently, we have developed a questionnaire that consists of two parts. In the first step of the questionnaire, speakers of a language translate English sentences into their language. And in this step, we can elicit the complete agreement paradigm of the language. We can then generate uh, sentences in the respective target language and then go to step two of the questionnaire. And in the step two, uh, we generate sentences and speakers are asked to rate these sentences on a scale from one to five. The sentences vary in um, the agreement especially, and this way we can find out which agreement strategies are perceived better by the speakers. Um, now let's come to the results of the database that we found so far. And before going into the factors um, that Melissa described to you, let me first give you an overview. So our database currently has 150 entries. In the section, uh, when we go down, you will see a lot of percentages. And again, these percentages show you how many percent um, the results for a certain language or word order and such constitute from the results found in total. Um, so let me give you a brief overview over the data that we currently have in the database. So first of all, um, we must admit that our database is currently not typologically balanced. The majority of entries are from Indo-European languages and Afro-Asiatic languages. You see that in 18, here Indo-European languages constitute um, almost 60% of the current um, data that we have. So we hope to overcome this problem by just collecting more data from other language families. Um, as for agreement features, we are pretty happy with the results. So we usually get the entire pattern. You see that we have about as many number data as person data. Gender data, I expected to show up less since gender agreement is less common in the world's languages. As for word order, you can see that currently there's an imbalance again between SV orders and VS orders. So SV orders is just the majority um, currently. And the reason for this is that we used to have another survey which didn't check for word order. And most of the data in our database currently are from this first survey. And finally, as for uh, coordination type, the last factor, we are also pretty happy. We usually find uh, 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 conjunction data and disjunction data. As for the agreement strategies, um, Melissa presented an overview to you about logically possible agreement strategies. Of these strategies, we have found four strategies so far, resolved agreement, closest conjunct agreement, default agreement, and ineffability. Sometimes we also found combinations of these different strategies. These combinations can mean that there's an optionality that speakers accept both patterns, or that um, for certain combinations, speakers use resolved agreement for others, they use closest conjunct agreement, for instance. Um, but you see overall that resolved agreement is just um, yeah, the common strategy in the world's languages. Now let's come to uh, the factors for the agreement strategies and what we've found so far. So Melissa presented to you four factors that might play a role in the choice of agreement strategy. And uh, now with our database, we could check which of these factors actually play a role. Um, since we are not so sure about ineffability and default agreement and that we found so far, and there might be other reasons why these patterns exist, we will restrict ourselves in this section by a, to a comparison of resolved agreement and closest conjunct agreement. So let's start with language. We definitely found some cross-linguistic variation. So languages differ in which strategies they show more. We also found intralinguistic variation, meaning that one language can show multiple strategies. In 23, you see a comparison of four languages, North Levantine Arabic, Turkish, Hebrew, and Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, Serbian. You see there are some differences. So some languages rather show resolved agreement, others show rather close conjunct agreement. However, according to a statistical test, um, we, could, we cannot confirm that the factor language is significant for the choice of agreement strategy. As for agreement features, um, we tested this by only looking at SV order in order to not confuse it with the factor word order. Um, we again did a statistical test. And as you can see in 24, uh, yeah, the, the, the agreement feature does not play a role, meaning we cannot say that different agreement features behave differently when it comes to the agreement strategy. As for word order, we can notice uh, that resolved agreement has a much higher frequency under SV order than under VS order. And we can also notice that closest conjunct agreement is much more prevalent under VS order. Um, this was also confirmed by a statistical test. So uh, the, word, the fact the word order did reach significance um, in the statistical test, meaning that uh, word order seems to be 
a big factor for the choice of agreement strategy. Finally, as for the coordination type, um, conjunction or disjunction, we again wanted to disentangle this factor from word order. So we only looked at SB order. Um, and overall, what we found is that both in conjunctions and disjunctions, resolved agreement is the dominant pattern. However, disjunction has a slightly bigger tendency for closest conjunct agreement. Um, but according to a statistical test, this, this did not reach statistical significance. You can see this in 26. Now that we have presented the results to you, let me summarize our talk. So we hypothesized four factors that might influence the agreement strategy. This is language, agreement feature, word order, and coordination type. Our database currently can only confirm that word order is a significant factor. We found that um, under the S order, closest conjunct agreement is more probable than under SV order. But obviously more data are needed to see whether or not the other factors play a role as well. As for word order specifically, um, this is really a big puzzle for theories of agreement, since um, in many constructions, the final word order is fixed after agreement has applied. That means it is not really clear how word order can affect agreement. Um, additionally, what we always have to keep in mind that it's not, it, the results do not mean that the S order equals closest conjunct agreement and SV order equals um, resolved agreement but rather our results show some tendencies. Often there is some optionality between agreement strategies for speakers. And also we noted in the elicitation sessions that some speakers experienced some insecurity regarding the judgments. Um, we hope that we can grow our database in the future as in the last years, the interest in agreement with coordination has increased in linguistics. And researchers can access our database to find data of a specific language, or they can use the database to find generalizations for language families or typological tendencies. Overall, we hope that the data can help to understand how coordinations resolve five features and eventually um, shed some more light on the specifics of agreement. Also, please note that there are other database projects like Walls or Terraling, uh, which collect language data to help find universal tendencies. As for coordination specific, Linger, Haslinger et al. have developed a database on Terraling, and we hope that we can connect our data with other projects in the future. So thank you very much for listening. We are looking forward to the discussion in May.